I'm here with a little mocha. She just got spayed a, about a week ago, so she's wearing the cone of, of awesomeness. It's not a cone of shame. Um, in this video, we're going to go over how you can uh, some tips you can use if you have a dog that has separation anxiety like little uh, mocha dog does. And when she fusses, like she just did, I'm going to listen to what she's saying and I'll put her down on the ground. And she's going to probably bark a little bit. That's okay. All right, so this is going to be mostly me talking so you don't really have to worry about shooting her. So when dogs are, have separation anxiety, it is essentially a panic attack of the dog's going, sit, how? It's a panic attack the dog's going into because they are not practiced at being alone. Most of us exasperate this because we let the dog sit on our lap or on the couch or on our feet all the time. So they're constantly touching us. If you ever dated somebody who was really clingy, you could feel like that's a little smothering. Now for us, it's not the smothering experience for her. For her, she's insecure if I'm not in physical contact with you. Uh, for example, the guardians here have an audience when they go to the bathroom, a little mocha joins them and applauds from the, uh, from the gallery. So she doesn't have any practice of being alone. This is why if you have a puppy setting up a long-term confinement area and having to sleep, eat, and feed in there, I guess eat and feed are the same thing, and be there anytime you can't supervise them, it helps them practice being alone. Now I just went over a leave it exercise with her. Teaching dogs to practice activities that require self-restraint and self-control is really an important part of separation anxiety. But the very first thing we want to do is work on what we call desensitization. Dogs digging in our bed. Dogs uh, uh, recognize that we're about to leave because we have a departure ritual. We pick up our keys, we pick up our sunglasses, we grab our uh, shoes, our briefcase, we put a work uniform on or whatever it is. So the dog's like, every time David puts his blue shirt on, he's going to leave. So they start getting worked up long before I leave, and by the time I actually close the door, they have a meltdown. So what you want to do is, if these are one of the triggers, what you do is just come over here, and then sit down and watch some TV. And then pick up the glasses a little bit later on. Put them on or put them where you normally keep them, then take them back off sit down. If you put a special pair of shoes on, uh, and you're in you guys' home, you don't wear shoes, so go over there and put your shoes on. That is also part of your departure ritual. Put your shoes on, Stand there for a second, take them off and go sit back down. Um, and so the idea is you keep on doing these things. So when I pick up the keys, the dog's like, yawn, whatever. Now we've desensitized the dogs from those individual triggers. And eventually then I can pick up the keys and my sunglasses and go put my shoes on. And then I take them off and go sit back down. So at first you do them individually until the dog's no longer reactive. Then we do combinations and do the whole thing. The next stage is we want to help the dog learn how to practice being alone. And I like to do this in a couple of capacities. First of all, um, the dog likes to, it's a, it's a, it's a cozy uh, co uh, apartment here in Santa Monica. There's not a lot of room, but the dog usually hangs out on the carpet right next to the L-shaped couch that is behind the camera right now that the guardians hang out at all the time. So she's right next to us. She's at 100% contact with us. And then when we leave the house, that's zero. That's the biggest range there is. So what I want her to do is start practicing being apart. So if we put her on a dog bed that's maybe over here in front of the TV and we're sitting on the couch, she's sitting 10 feet away from us. That's practicing being slightly apart from us and that's important. The important thing is we want her to practice being calm while she's not direct contact with us. So teaching the dog to go to the dog bed and the way that I do that is I would maybe, let's say I'm gonna call the dog bed Jamaica. I lure her over here with the dog treat. As soon as she steps on it, I would say how, which is her uh, marker word and then I give her that treat. And then I ask her to sit. She sits, I say how and give her the treat. I count to five. Say how and give her the treat as long as she stays there. She got up and moved away, so there's no treat because she didn't do what I wanted her to do. There's no punishment, there's no treat. And you'd be surprised how quickly the dog will end up staying there. And eventually I, I, I have her sit on the, on the bed and I might come up with a name, call it Jamaica. Then I lure her over and say how and give her the treat. So now Jamaica means go to this place and get a treat. Then eventually after I've done this, uh, this enough then I can put her on the dog bed and take one step back come back, how, give her the treat. And I might repeat that five or six times. And I might go back up this way, next time I back up this way, next time I back up that way, and then into this room. Dogs need a lot of variety in their practice so they can kind of absorb it, they, otherwise they don't generalize well. So eventually, now I can take one step away from any angle and she stays there on the bed, and I take two steps away, come back, and say how and give the treat. When I take two steps away, it takes me twice as long. So now I'm actually incorporating a little bit of duration to the distance. But for her, because I get it uh, one step this way, one step that way, one step that way, I went at her pace. So I was saying, if you have, if you go like take a step away and she comes to you, you might have to have, put her on the dog bed, say uh, Jamaica, put her on the dog bed, say how, give her the treat. Then you might just go like this, how? 
and I'm actually taking a step, I'm taking a half step or a quarter step. So always work back to an easier level that the dog can practice at and practice that until the dog's proficient, then go to a half step and then a full three quarters of a step, then a full step away. And we can also do things to set our dogs up for success. She's a high energy dog. How? She's sitting down, so I'm gonna give her a treat for that one. So exercising her before we practice this sets her up for success. She doesn't have all this crazy energy. So maybe we do a little training, some scent games, uh, play fetch, go for a sniff walk. And after we do that, we give her 10 minutes recovery, then we practice this exercise. It's easier for her to relax because she doesn't have those energy. If she's running around the room or has this energy, that's not the right time to practice. And practice needs to be successful. Um, eventually, when it gets to the point where I can put her in this, into it here, uh, say Jamaica, she goes here, and I back up all the way to the door maybe, and then turn around and come back to her, say the Martha word, and give her the treat. And I might also sit down on the couch and then go in the bedroom. And eventually I can do a whole bunch of them. I can put her in here, go and make a sandwich in the kitchen, come back, say the Martha word, give her a treat. What is she doing? She's practicing being somewhat apart. She's not right next to us. And if I'm in the kitchen over there, I'm beyond line of sight. That's really hard for dogs to do. I'm gonna talk about that in the next little part of the sec, uh, little exercise. So once we've gotten to the point where our dog can kind of stay on a dog bed, and we could say Jamaica and the dog runs there, then we say, how can I give her a treat? The thing that we, the last part of this is, uh, well, I guess the last part might have been a little addendum, is I want the dog to practice being alone. And one of the best ways to do this is teaching your dog to stay. Now, most of us teach our dogs to stay in kind of an inappropriate way. If you're the, if you're the camera's the dog, I would say, stay, 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 come, as I knock things over. And then the dog's coming to me. Um, so that's not really a stay because I'm saying it multiple times. So there's three days. There's duration, there's distance, and there's distractions. I used to teach this for duration only, but dogs get bored with it. So I've learned to do it with distractions because just like uh, stepping away, when my distractions get longer and longer, I'm also increasing distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some treats here, and when we get down to the ground, I'm going to show you how to teach a dog to stay. Now, uh, I asked the guardians this off camera, but I didn't actually ask and find out what they want to use. What do you want to use as your release word? Release, break, freedom, any of those resonate with you? You can change it later, just I want to have one for the... Uh, break? Was what is it? Release, release, perfect. All right, so you want to come over here and learn how to stay? All right. So now, the dog doesn't have to sit or lay down. I just go with whatever the dog feels comfortable with. If you want to sit down yourself, it might be a little bit more comfortable to sit down and film it. All right, so we can have a little bit better camera presence. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move that over there. This over here. And we're gonna meet you over here. That's a better orientation. Okay, so if your dog likes to sit, practice to sit. If they like to lay down, practice in the down position. They can stand. The stay just means they don't move from the area. They can go from a sit to a down to an up, as long as they stay in the area. All right, so what I'm gonna do is to put her a sit, stay, oops, stay, I didn't say the mark word. Stay, how? I'm just asking for one second. Now to do distractions, and she, this is the other reason why I don't like doing a shake. You saw she went like this because she's learned to shake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you come over here, sit. I'm gonna say stay. Okay, let's try it again. Stay, put my hand back, move my elbow. How? I give her that treat. So now I say stay. That was too much for her. I'm going at a very fast pace in this video. You normally wouldn't do this. So you normally do like maybe five or seven times where you go like this, like sit, stay, how, stay, how, stay. So there's no treat because she didn't do what I want. She auto-released. So sit. Stay, how, stay, how, there you go, I'll give it to you. <laughs> it's hard not, it's hard to do it with the code, but yeah, I got it underneath. Here you go, sweetheart. There you go. All right, come here one more time. I'm trying to do this with a release. Come here. Sit, stay, how, stay, how. Stay, how, release. So I, when I get done with two, three repetitions or whatever it is, you saw there when I was doing it, I could do two of these 
It wasn't until after I practiced a couple times I could do three of those before she actually stayed for all three. We need to go at our dog's pace, not at our pace. Um, she was doing what's called an auto release, which means she was released, uh, leaving before I was ready. If your dog does that, I'm gonna let her sniff this, I'm not giving her a treat, I'm just let her sniff so she doesn't bark. But if the dog auto releases and I reward them, they're gonna continue doing it. Now when I'm doing this, I want you to watch my face for this one. Sit, stay, come. Oh. So I broke eye contact. A lot of us will stare at our dogs the whole time and then, and then when we actually end up leaving the room, we break eye contact and they auto release themselves. So make sure when you're doing this, pull out your phone, look at your phone, um, look at your partner, look out the window, you know, kind of check out the bar or whatever it is. So she gets used to staying without being locked in by the eye contact. And after five times, 10 times, however many times you're doing this, you throw the treat to the side and release her. Gradually, you're gonna work up to a longer, uh, more activities, but don't always go for more. Every once in a while, go back to like a one second stay, even though you're up to a 60 second stay, for example. So eventually you're gonna to wanna to get to the point where you could like tell her to sit and maybe stand up and do a jumpy jack and then say the word and give her the treat and she stays there. Once you get to the point where you can have a little bit of time, now we're gonna be starting to incorporate leaving the area. And so we're gonna we've already been incorporating uh, distractions, but then we do distance. So if she's right here, for example, where my bag is, she's not ready for this. So I would say stay, and then I'll take a couple steps away. Let's say there's a wall right here. And I'm gonna have you film me. Oh, sorry. Let's say there was, that's okay. Let's say there's a wall right here. So I walk here, and here's the wall. I get behind the wall, I take a step out of sight, and I immediately come back to her. Once you leave sight, that, that, I know, I'm telling, you, I'm telling you right now. When you leave the sight, that's really hard. They're gonna often come to look for you. You have to remember for the stay, it's the only activity that we do where we're asking the dog not to do something. Everything else, potty, go to your bed, roll over, grab your ball stays so they offer a lot of different things so don't try walking away until you can have a good 20 seconds of a lot of distractions some dogs it might be a little bit longer than that and then you can start to stay one step away come back say your word give her the treat two steps away three steps away and you're adding more distractions all right so you want to get to the point where eventually you can be out of sight and then the next time after you've done it a couple times you step outside for two seconds and then come back and say your mark where you have a treat eventually you get up to the point where you can be out of sight like for a minute or two minutes. Now the dog is practicing being calm because they know you're here, you're not actually leaving the house. That would be too much. So the last stage for this would be actually leaving the house. I'm gonna have the guardian come over uh, here uh, towards the door. So if you wanna come and stand right here and keep filming. So now what we're gonna do, without grabbing our glasses or our shoes or anything else, we're gonna have the dog uh, wait. We're gonna come over here and then go back and give her the treat. So that sound is gonna be something that's also associated with your departure. So this would probably be something I would actually work on with the distractions. So I'd have somebody over here, so I'd be like this, so sit, out. Sit, so, and I should've said how. Uh, but then when you do this, maybe one of you is over there treating her, the other one of you is standing over there. What are we doing? We're doing a partial leaving. We're not actually leaving, but we're using the sound and we're doing it while we're far away from the dog and the dog is practicing being calm. The last step for this is I wanna not put the dog into a stay, but I might put, have the dogs, when it's just relaxing, I would get up and I leave, and I go out the store, close it, immediately come back inside, provided she's not barking, immediately come back inside and give her a treat. Say how and give her the treat. So I only go out the store and I immediately come back in. Before you get a chance to freak out, I've already come back in. And we do this a couple times, maybe five or six times, whatever. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no set. Every dog is unique. But you want to come out uh, several times, they come over and give her a treat. And then we, and you're not asking her to stay, but we're just saying, when I leave this door, it does, it's nothing to be worried about because I'm going to come right back. And when I do, you're going to get a treat. And now I can, when I get to that point, I'm gonna start leaving and waiting for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. The idea is to increase the duration of you being gone while you're right outside your door. The guardians here have security systems so they can actually watch their dog on video. So when you're doing this, I would have my, the video of my dog. So when I go outside, I can watch. What is, what is Mocha doing? 
Is she freaking out and running around? Is she chewing stuff up? Or is she just sitting there looking at the door waiting? That's what we're ideally looking for. This is why exercising her before we do this activity can really set her up for success. So the idea is eventually it's the point where you sit outside and your neighbors think you're a weirdo because you're sitting outside on your iPad doing work outside your own door instead of your, in your apartment. But if she starts to bark, you can immediately come back in. Now that's not a good thing, because if she barks and come back in, that's chaining an unwanted behavior. But that would tell me that I need to go to a previous level of success and practice there, and then work back up to that. But this way, a lot of people, what they do is they say, stay, dog's pretty good, let's go get a sandwich around the corner real quick. We're, and then by the time you come back, the dog's been barking and practicing freaking out. So the whole point of this is the dog practices not freaking out because we go at very slow intervals. We practice them over and over again before we go to the harder level until the dog is successful at it. And we've already desensitized them with all the triggers. We set them up for success by exercising them. And we're practicing this stuff every single day, a couple of times a day. So after a while, the dog's like, okay, is this the time where you're gonna leave the house and then you wait out there for a little while and then you come back in and give me a treat? What's she doing? She's practicing being alone. She's practicing being calm. And we're helping stave off separation anxiety. Okay. Okay. Puppy, puppy, puppy. There you go. Sit. Well, this is my little buddy Mocha. These are some tips you can use if you have a dog that has separation anxiety. 